The tune still rings in our heads from Mega Man 2. And now, the newest edition, Mega Man 10. Hello, this is the Game Perfectionist, and I will be reviewing Mega Man 10 for the Xbox Live and the Wii. Xbox Live and Wii and, I don't know, maybe it's on PSN, I'm not quite sure, but I will be reviewing it. Ding. Um, this is by far one of the best Mega Man games. Uh, I have played Mega Man 2, Mega Man 8, a few of the Mega Man X's, Mega Man 9 and 10. So, I don't have very much Mega Man experience from the originals, but from what I have played of the originals, it is a hardcore game, and only the hardcore masters can beat it. Okay, maybe not, but, because I have beaten Mega Man 10, maybe 10 times. <laughs> but, yeah. So, let's get into the overall gameplay. If you don't know how to play Mega Man, I don't think you should be watching this video. In fact, I don't... In fact, if you haven't played the game, I don't even think you should be watching the video. Well, maybe you should to know if you want it. But I'm just going to tell you right now, get off your computer chair and go play some Mega Man 10. It, it's addictive. It's fun. It's got new characters. Playable characters. You can play as Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base. Each of the characters has their own unique abilities. Obviously, it's just an old 8-bit platformer. You jump, you shoot. You die a lot, a lot, a lot. But, um, Mega Man, he can shoot at a medium pace and can do nothing else. Just jump, move, and shoot. Proto Man, when he jumps, he uses a shield which deflects projectiles. He can also slide and charge his shots, but his shots are slower. Then there's Base. He has a rapid fire. Uh, machine gun mounted turret on his arm. I sound high. He has a machine gun mounted arm. Hi. I don't know. That shoots rapid fire and it can shoot in seven directions. All directions except for down. And he can uh, dash, but he can't like he can't like duck under projectiles. He can only like go forward faster. He's the weakest character, but he's my favorite because he's awesome. He's usually who I play the game with. Um, he's my buddy. Anyway, so um, there isn't much to say. It's just an old school platformer. It's difficult, really difficult. And if you don't know how the game works, you choose between eight bosses. I don't think I'll be able to name them offhand, but yeah. You do their stages, you defeat the robot master, you take their power up, and dominate the next one with it. Then you go to the Wily Castle, fight all the stages, fight all the bosses again, um, and then beat Dr. Wily. Kick his butt. That's how the game works. Not much to it. Let's see how much of it is different from the other games. As little as it sounds, there's actually a lot of different things to it. Obviously, all the levels are completely different. Mega Man's character model isn't really changed very much from the last uh, game of its kind. I think Mega Man 6 and then 7, absolutely terrible. 8 was okay. And then 9 brought it back. And, um, basically that's how that went. So, Sprite isn't very much changed. But we wouldn't have it any other way. We wouldn't like to see him as the two-year-old Mega Man who jumps and shoots and is going through puberty and he's, he's, he like charges his shot and he shoots him. And no. And it's not Mega Man X where your power-ups are an air dash or something. And these power-ups are kind of legit. Um, a lot of them are stupid. You have the uh, water shield. Leaf shield. You have the, um... You have a bouncy pink ball. Um, you got a cloud that shoots electricity. Uh, you got all these different kinds of power-ups. There is one problem. One problem I could find with the game. Well, there's basically two huge problems with the game. One problem is that... One problem. 
is that the power-ups, no matter who you're playing as, remain the same. And I don't care about that, but it would have been nice for, like, if you're playing as base, the power-up would be a little different. Not like the, like, a completely different power-up, but, like, a little bit different to extend the play. You know, the replay value. Not just being a matter of a little tiny difference in the characters. Like, you get whole new weapons, like, the bouncy ball for Mega Man would, like, bounce around, and for base... I don't know, maybe he could, like, control it or something, you know, stuff like that. Um, the little differences that really count. And my second complaint with the game is that easy mode is way too easy, and normal mode is just a little bit too hard. I'm not a hardcore Mega Man fan, but I can breeze through easy mode like it's, like it's, um, Mario Brothers. I can breeze through it like it's... 1-1 one, one Mario Brothers. But then normal mode, it's like World 8-3. It's like the drastic change. You don't want to stick to normal mode because that's a little... I mean, you don't want to stick to easy mode because that's too easy. Normal mode... I mean, it should have been like... There should have been three modes. I mean, there are three modes. You have to unlock hard mode. There should have been four modes. Easy, normal, hard, very hard. That's usually how things go like that. So, like, easy mode will be really easy, like easy mode is. N n um, normal mode would be, like, an, an easier, like, a, a harder than easy, but easier than hard. And then hard is, like, what normal mode is now. So there'd be something in between. And then very hard would be, like, hard mode. That seems fair. And... And the differences in the difficulties, I actually found stunning. I thought it would just be like the amount of hits people take, and uh, you take less. Hit, you take um, you can take less abuse, but it's actually completely different. Those things, as well as mixed in with different enemies, like if you play on easy mode and switch over to normal mode, in normal mode you'll see some different enemies that you would have never seen in easy mode. Like, the snowmen who throw their heads, they shoot, like, a bunch of bullets out of their heads when they explode. In easy mode, they just shoot, like, one or two. So it's the tiny differences that really matter. Um, this game is really good, and I would really recommend it, but I don't want to give it, like, a nine or something. So, and because this game, the learning curve is really weird. It goes from easy to hard. There's no, there's no, like, in-between, just right phase. It's either you breeze through this, or you, you, like, sit there and bang your controller on the floor asking for a health power-up. You, you do either one. So, overall, I'll give this game a 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10. I don't want to give it an 8.5, but I still recommend getting this game even if that learning curve between easy and normal is a little bit to uh, to learn, but once you master it, it can be really fun to play through, especially if you're really hardcore. You can play hard mode, and that is difficult. Um, so final verdict is 8 out of 10. I am the Game Perfectionist, and I bid you farewell.